Hello guys, welcome back to The Nest, I hope you're all keeping well. Time for another movie reaction from 1975. Um, I gotta say, this one was mellow, but disturbing. Yeah, those are two words to describe it, mellow and disturbing. <laughs> In case you don't know what movie I'm talking about, it is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Now, for those of you who don't know what it's about, so basically it starts off in this beautiful scenery in Oregon, I believe. Yeah, it's basically one of those um, colder states in America. It's set in a mental institution, so basically this guy named Randall McMurphy, he is a new patient at this institution where he has been put on for, I don't know what, Star Story Rip, I don't know what he's been put on for. He's played by a man called Jack Nicholson. I've been told to keep an eye out for him. Apparently he's going to be a very big name for the upcoming movies. And apparently, I, I also see that this movie has a lot of big names for it. Um, I'll get to that in a wee minute. But yeah, uh, so basically he has a meeting with the doctors, the head doctor of the institution. I I always wonder, you know, why these, um, the people in charge of this building, like the ones in charge, how they're so calm about everything, like they're not harsh or anything. And, you know, the whole reason why Randall is inside the mental institution is because you are belligerent, have attitude when it comes to work, and you are very, very lazy. Basically, Doc, I work and I fuck too much. Yeah, like throughout the whole movie, it hints that he's not actually mentally ill, like he's faking it because he's been put in prison for whatever, for assault, whatever crime he's committed. And he thinks that if he gets put in a mental institution, he's going to have a life of luxury. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. Like, obviously I don't plan to go to any, any of the two places mentioned or seen in this movie, but I don't know how it works whenever you're in prison or in a mental institution. I don't know whether you're supposed to work or, you know, if you're, you know, you, like you work out and play. I don't know how it goes. Like I do know that there are some places where you work out. You're you're sentenced to community labor and you're you have privileges. You can play pool or table. I don't know how it works. I did see in the movie that there are a lot of privileges they do get. They get to smoke cigarettes and they get to play cards and everything. But yeah, Randall hints towards the movie that he's faking it. <laughs> Even that, just trying to convince the doctors, just convinces the audience that, you know, he just wants to put it all on, you know, just for his own benefit. <laughs> Whenever he gets taken through the ward, he meets all the other members of the unit. Among them are Martini, played by a guy named Danny DeVito. I'm only going to mention the ones that apparently are going to be big names for the upcoming movies. Um, the young and stuttering Billy Bibbit, who's played by a guy called Brad Dourif, and the profoundly laced Max who's played by Christopher Lloyd. Now these three names in particular, I've been told to keep an eye out for them. And also this Indian named Chief, who appears to be deaf and unable to speak. Randall, however, does make very good friends with Chief and he, he seems to be very fond of Billy. So he does, I think it's because Billy's quite young and you know, he, he's in such quite a harsh environment. And you know, he seems to be playing basketball. He teaches Chief how to play basketball. You know, it, it turns out the Chief has a big advantage over the other teams, you know, he can, he can prevent the ball from going in the net just by grabbing onto it and you know he can he's so tall he can just catch it drop right into the net so he does it's fucking unbelievable but however the big problem with this mental institution is that it's run by a well the head nurse is a woman named nurse ratchet i gotta say she is one mean bitch like, she's passive-aggressive, but, it, you know, it turns out she's just having these meetings, these therapy sessions, but all she wants to do is just cause her subjects to have meltdowns. Do you know what I mean? How is it that no other man in this session has their own opinion? Well, she may seem quiet and passive, but at the same time, she's just cold and, you know, she doesn't care about any of her patients. You know, all she wants to do is just try and get a rise out of them. I gotta agree with Randall now in a wee minute. He uh he wants him and his fellow members to see a, a baseball game, but you know, at at the beginning very little of them want to go. But after a while he does try and get some of them, you know, to put their hands up. 
Ratchet tries to get a, the whole unit into objecting. You know, he says, you need the whole unit, Mr. McMurphy, to go to this baseball game. The meeting was adjourned, with the vote being 9 to 9. Oh my god, I gotta agree, she is an absolute cunt. You know, Randall puts it this way, you know, she is an absolute cunt. And you know, she takes away the privileges whenever it suits her. Now, I have to say, I did hear that this mental institution is an actual place. They did film it inside an actual mental institution. And still open in the present day. And if we're allowed, I wonder if I could actually, you know, visit it, you know, just to see what it's like. Um, you know, known back in 1975, they filmed in a mental institution. And anyway, Randall decides to be very rebellious and he actually steals a school bus to get his whole unit into the uh, bus to see this baseball game. However, they pick up this girl on the way and they decide to go on this big fishing trip. And he, him and the others pose as doctors. I'm Dr. McMurphy. R.P. McMurphy. It turns out that Billy has a whole I has a whole idea against fishing. He just wants to be with a girl, so he does. I got feel so sorry for Billy. They did, I do I do have to say they did come up with a very they did have a very good fishing trip. You know, they managed to catch this big, big one. It looks like a tuna, so it does. Or a grouper. I don't know. I do think groupers are a lot bigger than tuna, but it, it does look like a tuna fish or something. But they just get sent straight back to the mental institution. Where Randall actually finds out that none of the members, a good majority of them, are actually not actually committed. And they just choose to be there, but they're just too scared to leave. And it's really only Charlie and Randall and Chief who are actually supposed to be there, who are committed. But all the others can just leave whenever they want. That's something they don't understand, you know. They all have mental illnesses, you know. You can tell just by fucking looking at, just by fucking looking at their behaviour, you know, that they're not right in the head. Billy has a stuttering problem. Max has a profoundly issue. He could have Tourette's or something. Charlie, and you're going to see in a minute, he just has a complete meltdown because, like I said, he gets his cigarettes taken off him and he just goes into full meltdown mode. <laughs> Nurse Ratchet, where's my cigarettes? Please, wait your turn to speak, Mr. Cheswick. Oh God, I, I just want this bitch to fucking die, so I do. Like, you know, she just, oh, she has no emotion whatsoever. However, one thing leads to another. Randall actually ends up fighting one of the orderlies there, and then Chief starts getting involved because Chief seems to have grown very attached to Randall, so he, so he has. And he manages to choke out one of the orderlies, so he does. And, you know, the punishment ends up being shock therapy. My God. I, 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 actually, I actually do not know how someone could go through with that. Randall pretends to be brain damaged, so he does. He walks into the room. <laughs> I'd like to like the next girl up with like a pinball machine. And he's even more determined to defeat Ratchet, so he is. Um, and he's also so happy to find out the Chief is actually not deaf and speechless. The only reason he decides to be that way is so, you know, he won't have to interact with anyone. And also, it's so he could avoid alcoholism like his father before, you know, which, which is a fair point. You know, if... I do know that alcoholism can be inherited from some parents. I think that's how it works sometimes. You know, if the parent's an alcoholic, then sometimes the child will want to take part as well. On Christmas Eve, whenever the orderlies leave for the night, there is one guy in charge. <laughs> I gotta say, this guy cracked me up. I forget his name, though. But basically, they uh, invite two of the girls, one of them from the uh, fishing trip, invite them into the mental institution for a party, they bring alcohol in and, you know, they play music. Not really any harm done, but, you know, they all decide to go into the, um, the fucking, one of the rooms, start having a party, and I just, I just really love the security guy. Like, he's so worried about losing his job, and he's just telling everyone, you'll get the fuck out of here and everything. Um... <laughs> Billy then realises that he um he loves candy. You know, he, he looked her into the eyes whenever they were on the fishing trip. I think he did say to her, you have be 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 beautiful eyes. And Randall actually sees this as an opportunity, you know, for him to finally um find someone he loves. However, not a good idea whenever you're planning an escape and you get so drunk that you fall asleep and you just miss your opportunity altogether. 
the bitch ratchet arrives the next morning and she realizes the party has happened and she uh, orders the security guy to get that woman off the premises right now. This guy's definitely lost his job. I am fair play to Billy, you know, he's so proud of himself, you know, whenever he stands up to Ratchet, he, 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 does, he does not stutter once. However, he was back to stuttering whenever Ratchet decides to psychologically abuse him by threatening to tell his mother. I, I don't even know what, like, Billy obviously is in the mental institution because he has an abusive relationship with his mother. And Ratchet decides to push his buttons, just so she'll cause trouble. What do you have to say for yourself? What will your mother think about this, Billy? While trying to escape for the second time, you hear this loud scream, and it turns out that Billy has managed to escape the fate of his mother fine night by killing himself by slitting his wrists, and he's lying on the ground, and this just puts Ronald into rage mode, so he does. He strangles the fuck out of Ratchet after attacking her, and he very nearly kills her. I, I am so gutted that she gets saved. You have no idea how long I was wanting this villain to die. <laughs> but she does get some sort of come up and she you know you know, after a while, you know, she's got a neck brace on, she she can't really speak anymore. I guess her um voice is permanently damaged from the strangle. He must have done it really, really hard. I think the actress of Nurse Ratchet played this role very, very well because you hate her so much because she she's so sinister and very sincere about her role, so she is. I don't know. But, you know, like, she's one of the most twisted films I've ever come across so far on this YouTube channel. However, the, the um, card games are no longer suspended, and there are rumours going around that Randall has escaped. However, it turns out that that was all just rumours. He's come back. Chief thinks that he's come back to escape with, with him, but they've performed an operation on him. They've caused a lobotomy, and he's just become an absolute vegetable. He can't speak. He's still alive, but I don't think he has any of his senses left. They've got rid of parts of his brain, so he can't function properly anymore. But Chief decides that this is the right thing to do. He decides to suffocate him with a pillow, so he will have some sort of like gratification, some sort of freedom, you know, away from that place, so he won't have to live the rest of his life as a vegetable, if you know what I mean. It's sad ending, but Chief does think it's for the best. Chief then decides to carry out Randall's plan by lifting up the big sink that they put a bet on the lift in the beginning of the film and he actually manages to win. Now I kind of had a feeling that Chief was going to be the one to do this because he was the only one who had the proper strength for this job and then he manages to escape off into the distance and then that's the end of the movie. Really enjoy this movie, guys. Now, I do have to say, I do hope the Chief doesn't actually get caught again, if you know what I mean. Like, I obviously hope he does get some sort of freedom. But, you know, it's sad that uh, Billy and Randall had to suffer in the end. You know, at least they both discovered awful fates, if you know what I mean. You know, the uh, shock therapy, I thought, was absolutely awful. You know, even after one buzz of it, you could see how Randall was obviously struggling and, you know, suffering. You could see the pain in his face. I can't imagine how shock therapy would be, you know, it just shows that even though it's a, it's a punishment, you know, the, the whole place is just cruel, all thanks to Nurse Ratchet, and, you know, at least she's so scared of what will happen to her that, you know, she decides to let them have card games, you know, she'll, you know, she's, she's got a weak voice, neck brace, and I don't think she'll be as hard, hard on the patients as she used to be, but, you know, at least there's justice for the other inmates there. Um... Yeah, I really enjoyed this movie, guys. Um, I wish they would release a, they would release a sequel, you know, to show what life was like outside of the mental institution for Chief. We'll never know. Or even a bit of a backstory for Randall, you know, before he got taken to the institution. We never know, guys. <laughs> Not even nowhere near them yet. But nowadays, you you just never know what kind of prequel series, you know, these. That Hollywood is producing for us. I really enjoy Jack Nicholson's performance in this, by the way. I've been told, like I said, I've been told to keep an eye out for him and Danny DeVito and Brad Dourif, um, Christopher Lloyd. Don't know what they're gonna be in yet, but we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, really enjoyable film, guys. You know, really enjoy 1975 so far. I've only got one more movie to do. That will probably be tomorrow night or Tuesday night. And then as you know, when I finish a year, I'll take away rest and you know, we'll see what happens.
But yeah, just remember, everyone in this movie is absolutely cuckoo. But if nobody in this movie was cuckoo, we wouldn't have a fantastic movie now, would we? <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about it. Leave a comment what you would like to see next. Uh, the next movie is actually going to be a big one from 1975. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but everyone's going to know this one. Um, don't forget to take care of yourselves, turn on all notifications, share on your social media like Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever you want. Even MySpace, even though nobody actually uses it anymore. Comment what you'd like to see next. Subscribe, like, favourite, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Love you all to death.